Hello YouTube. Today I am going to be working on this MacBook. This is a A2440 that's been sent in for a customer for a no power fault. Um, and most importantly for them is getting it to the point that we can recover the data. So let's uh let's talk about how I'm gonna diagnose this one. I'm going to start with using this uh, BY3200 Mac power cable um, and hooking that up to the bench power supply. It's got a USB-C power delivery and MagSafe 1 and 2. I use this tool all the time. I'm sure there are other tools out there that will do the same thing. Um, but this will tell me what voltage the machine is taking, what current the machine's consuming, and then we can from there we can figure out what the fault might be without having to get the multimeter out and spend too much time looking at it. So let's just hook this up and turn on the bench supply. There we go and you can see in the top right corner there is a bit of power draw just from this uh, power delivery cable so there's 18 milliamps there and if I turn it on that increases a little bit. So that's 35. So we need to consider that this cable itself is drawing a little bit of power too. Um, let's plug in the Mac and see what sort of power it pulls. It'll also show us on this LCD whether it's negotiating 20 volts or not, um, which is kind of handy. Let's plug in. Okay, so it's stuck at 5 volts. And the power consumption is very low. You see the bench power supply went from 0.35 to 0.39. So it's really not drawing any power at all. Now, the way these Macs work is you need power to the M1 chip before it will negotiate 20 volts charging. So first, to get that, you want voltage in and then PP bus is created and then you've got another power rail 3VA AON which powers the P mics which then in turn powers the M1 chip and eventually if that's all fine then we'll get 20 volts. Because the power draw is so low I think there's an issue with either PP bus or 3VA AON. So let's dig in and uh, see what we find. Uh, battery's already unplugged, good. So, should we put you under the microscope so you can see what I'm doing? Yeah, okay. So we're looking at the uh, trackpad connector here, and the battery connector sits just below that, down here somewhere. And always near the battery connector, you will, on a MacBook at least, you will find some fuses which in this case are down here, there's a little number 12 written on them and I'm going to check that for a short circuit first, that's a PP bus so let's measure one probe on ground let's see the resistance okay that's measuring 7 ohms that's a weird value for a short circuit, usually you'd expect it to be 0 ohms well, that's 7 ohms, that's not good. Now, most people, when they see one short circuit, will just start dumping current into it and see what gets hot. But when there's a value like 5 ohms, 4 ohms, 7 ohms, I, I always check around the rest of the board first, just to uh, make sure that there's nothing else connected to that short circuit as well, because that can use, that can give us some clues. So I'm going to quickly run around the board and probe some coils out 5 volt USB-C is ok um, what we've got down here, NANDs make sure the SSD is not bad yeah they're ok I think that's a 5 volt rail another NAND rail I think the other 5 volt USB-C for the other side of the board 3VA AON is also measuring 7 ohms. So, that means we've probably got a failure of one of the high side MOSFETs. Because so if I measure, measure between a PP bus 
and 3VA ALN, yeah, they're connected directly to each other. So there's a path between 12 volts and 3.8, which is not good news. What this means is everything on the 3.8 volt rail has been hit with battery voltage. This could be a major short circuit. Um, let's, let's get the board out of it. Let's try and isolate PP bus from 3.8 volts for a start. And then we can possibly inject some power and see how much of the board lights up. Okay, the board is out. Now, I'm just going to have a quick look over the board with the microscope just to make sure I'm not missing any signs of liquid damage or any anything that could have uh, led to this fault. Let's have a look. doesn't look to be liquid damaged, unless it's just liquid hiding under this sticker here. Yeah, I mean that looks okay. So this is the uh, buck controller for the uh, 3.8 volt AON MOSFETs. So, 12 volts comes into these MOSFETs and the controller changes the frequency that this, these MOSFETs turn on and off and then 3.8 volts comes out of these inductors. Now because 12 volts is connected directly to 3.8 volts we can assume that one of these MOSFETs is short circuit. I could inject power to find out which one gets hot but I'm a little bit too lazy for that so I'm just gonna I'm going to hope it's that one, and if not, it'll probably be that one or that one. I think those are the high sides. Yeah, okay. So let's remove the, those fats and see which one is the culprit. Okay, was it MOSFET number one? So I'm going to go back in with the mic meter and check. 3 VA AON is still short. No way. No way. First guess. Now, is PP bus still short? Let's go back to the fuse. And measure to ground again. PP bus is no longer short either. Now this is some kind of miracle because the way this short circuit meant that battery voltage and system voltage was getting into the 3.8 volt AON rail. So the fact that that is not shorted is is good. It's really good because it could kill the P mics. It could kill anything on that 3.8 volt rail. Potentially lead to the death of the. Uh, processor if the P mics went in a certain way. But it appears let's check the resistors. It appears that the uh only major fault so far is with this MOSFET. 
super lucky. Um, so let's put a MOSFET back on. Let's replace it. And plug it in and see if it works. Or if it has more damage yet to be fixed. Let's add a bit of flux. It's probably a little more than I wanted, but it'll be fine. We've got a capacitor stuck to that. Let's get this sucker soldered. Okay. Let's recheck for shorts one last time. Yeah, that looks fine. And PP bus. Great. Okay. This is the make or break moment of this repair. If 12 volts went into 3.8 AOM, then it could have killed so much of this board. But we might have got lucky. It looks like we could have got lucky. So let's plug it in. See what happens. Oh my god. It got to 20 volts. It's drawing 300 milliamps, which is sort of in the region of what I'd expect, these ones have a bit of a weird boot up sequence. 500 milliamps, yeah. No way this could just be a single MOSFET. How lucky is that? So, pop it back in the casing and see if it displays anything. Uh, getting these boards back in the casing is a miserable job. There's so many little cables you've got to get out of the way. Hopefully, we don't have to do it more than once. Okay, let's see if we get anything out of it. Will it display an image? <laughs> We've got Apple logo. Oh, awesome. And it's booting. Okay. Cool. I'm going to uh, cover that username. Huh, maybe I don't have to. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's booted. To something. There we go. Oh. They didn't even cover the username. <laughs> there we go. It works, though. That's incredible. See, most of the time when you have a high voltage go into a lower voltage power rail, it will destroy a board. It will kill almost everything on that lower voltage power rail, because the chips aren't designed to handle that much power. But for some reason, this little MacBook has not done that. Anyway, I'll uh, put the screws in off camera and make sure it's all working before it goes back to the customer. But not only have they got their data back, this MacBook should be fully working and totally usable. So, if you like this video, uh, hit that like button. I hope you learned something. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.